Hi guys, um, yeah, this is the solution for the homework, or one of the possible solutions for the last homework. Um, the homeworks uh, this time were a little bit more difficult, um, because also I forgot something and I hope uh, you read the information in the last video, because, um, th well, the first homework was that you had to uh, add an audio source to all the doors and then play an audio source when the door is opening and when the door is closing. But there's a pro uh, problem with that because if you do it in the update method then your ears will explode because the sound will be played again every single frame in your game and that's a lot. So you have to do it another way and I'm going to show you how it's supposed to be done. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the script. Um, the script you can see has become a little bit more complicated, but don't worry, I will go through it again. But first let me show you what I did in Unity. So I grabbed this door one because this is my example door. So the first thing I did was I grabbed all the different doors and added an audio source. Um, so let me show you. Okay, so now we have an audio source, and this audio source is set to an a 2D sound. And um, yeah, that's about it. We just added an audio source. Then I went into the script, and I added those two lines. Where are they? Down here. I added a private audio source, and this is the audio source on the door this one here and then I added an opening sound so similar to the piano and the flashlight then I wrote the start method because I didn't want to drag all the audio sources inside of the slot and because the, um, the script is on the same game object as the audio source right here you can actually search for the components on a game object and then put it via script inside of the slot. So that's exactly what I did. I wrote audio source, which is the variable, and this is equal to get component. So I'm getting a component on this, um, on this game object, which is the door, and I'm searching for the audio source game object, uh, sorry, uh, the audio source component. And I just apply this to this variable. So now we have uh, saved the variable and we don't have to slot the audio source in every time. Then I went into the public void change door state method. And here is where you sh uh, should have uh, played the sound effect. Because if you do it in update, as I said, uh, your ears will explode and the sound will be very distorted, very loud. And it's just not good. So I wrote if audio source is not equal to null, um, that means that if there is actually an audio source, uh, this is a good practice to do this because if you don't slot in an audio source, perhaps you forget to add the audio source or uh, you didn't put it in because you didn't do it like this in the start method. Uh, you will get an error whenever you start to play the game. And if you write this, then uh, uh, this line of code will be ignored, uh, which makes the script functional again. So you won't get an error if you forget it. So it's um, a good practice to write if and then the thing, the variable, if it's not equal to null, so if something is inside of this, then execute the code that belongs to this thing that's inside of this. So, if there is an audio source, then audio source would play one shot the opening sound. I mean, you saw this like two times now, and I think that should be uh, familiar to you. So, that's the first um, homework done. Let me show you that it works. I added a uh, public boolean and I called it test. And down here, I wrote another <coughs> sorry another line of code which says if test is equal to true 
then change door state and then I put test again to false and uh, I, I do this so that I can uh, uh, while playing the game click in the inspector on this test button and then this method will be executed so I can see that this uh, script is actually working so let me show you I go inside of here look at the door then press escape to have my mouse cursor unlocked go to the test click and you can see the door opens and you can hear the sound okay um now I go out of play mode and the next thing sorry we need to be in unity editor the next thing I did was the more difficult part I added two triggers I called this one the door front trigger and I called this the door back trigger so what they do is they check if the player is standing in this area in front of the door I could also make them smaller and I probably I probably would but it's just for testing purposes and this one checks if the player is on this side and then I wrote two very very simple scripts let me show them to you the first one is the door front trigger script uh, the only thing it does it has one variable which is the door so uh, you can actually write uh, variables of scripts that you have written by your own so we wrote the store script and now I can use the store script as a variable so I'm checking for this door script and then I just put in let me go to the front trigger right here where it says door I just dragged in the door inside of this slot and then I wrote void on trigger enter collider other so again that's an on trigger enter you know that from the jump scare tutorial and then I check if it's actually the player and then if it's the player then I set f uh, the door so in the door script I added another boolean which is called um, where is it yeah here public boolean front and public boolean back that's just to check if the player is in front or the back of the door and I have them both set at false and if I enter the front trigger then door dot front so the variable right here so this one uh, this one will be set to true and this one door dot back is equal to false because we are obviously not on the back side and to do uh, what and if I do this I make sure that not both variables are active at the same time because this could happen if the player is like standing between tho uh, those both triggers which looks kind of funny uh, because it wouldn't work the script will freak out and then I went into the update method and where it says if open I added two if loops uh, not loops uh, two if statements and the first is if front and has opened completely uh, has opened completely is also another new variable that I added it's a private boolean um, and this practically checks if uh, the door has co uh, has opened completely so if uh, if right here so if the transform.local rotation is actually the target rotation open then the door has opened completely and uh, this uh, is set to true and we're going to use this later on so this rebel here to make sure that the player can't spam the uh, can't spam the door and open and close it all the time and then what I did is so if front and has opened completely is equal to false then I just added this negative sign in front of the door open angle so that it opens in the other direction and down here I just said else if back and has open completely is equal to false 
Then I just set it to uh, door open angle right here. So this is the negative of the open angle and this is the open angle itself. And down here, when the door closes, I just uh, set has open completely to false. So now if I jump into the game again and I walk let me select the door right here and I walk into the front trigger you can see that front gets uh, that the front box gets in check so here and now if I click open you can see the door opens up and if I go back here you can see that the back box gets opened uh, gets uh, gets in check mark so if I click open again and now click it again you can see the door opens in this way so, um, and that's how you make sure that the door always opens in the direction the player is looking. Um, this is a completely optional system and I'm not going to use it for the rest of the doors. I just wanted to show you the possibilities. And um, yeah, so if you want to use the system you can use it of course. If you don't want to use it that's also no problem because we won't use it again in this um, tutorial. And yeah, so that's everything I did. I'm just going to delete this and this because I don't need the test uh, the test variables anymore. I save and I'm also going to remove this stuff later on because as I said I won't use it for the tutorial. I just wanted to show you that uh, this is possible because sometimes uh, perhaps you want this to uh, to be in your game. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope this episode was so confusing. Um, please leave a like and also comment down below if you have any further questions. So until next time, bye guys. Oh, 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 oh,